paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Have you got a bland dining room that needs a royal revamp? I'll show you how to up the elegance, add whimsy, and wow right now. Great design comes from a winning formula. Mine is as basic as a set of building blocks. Put them together, add up the results, and you've got a sensational room. Today's case study is Gita and Jerry's sparsely furnished dining room. I'm going to show you how to take a blank space and transform it into something warm and inviting with plenty of character. This room to me is like, how do you take a cardboard box yeah. and how do you turn it into a jewel box? Right. Right now it's just the two of us and we tend to work long hours, but we always try to make sure we have a meal together. And I want to have it a place that's cozy, it's inviting, it's just something that feels intimate. We want it to be the standout room of our main floor in the house. Great proportions. I love the scale of this room and I love that it is a square. We've got walls in good condition. Yeah. We have doors that close if we want to separate it from the rest of the space. And the greatest thing about this room is this is just a blank slate. I think that we need to get some pattern, get some interest, get some texture onto the walls. Absolutely. I think we need to play up the window. I don't think that we have to skimp on elegance and glamour in order to have comfort and atmosphere. When decorating the dining room, you need to start by looking at what you've got. We've got traditional baseboards, casings, and moldings. We need to embrace the traditional bones, embellish it, and make it fun and funky. You can be the lead embellisher on this project. Yeah, I can embellish. Just about anything. We're going to turn this lackluster dining room into a jewel by using traditional furniture and wallpaper, embellishing the floors, livening up the windows, and decking it out with chic accessories. Every dining room should be a conversation starter. If you're heading in a traditional direction, your first stop should be to see what you can find in vintage furnishings. You'll always get better quality at a better price point. Oh, the bargain basement. Oh, shield back chairs. These are great. $195 for six. Less than $35 each, but you have to completely refinish them. Mm -hmm. You have to reupholster them. Are they even sturdy? Rock a bye, baby. No, they need tightening up. Okay, so they need re gluing, refinishing, reupholstery. That's a lot of re and re. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing we're probably looking at about $350 at least per chair. Okay, but at $350 a chair, you couldn't get a new chair for anywhere near that. These chairs will play well with the dining room's traditional features. Once reimagined with fabulous fabric, they'll be the showcase pieces in the space. The drama doesn't have to end there. It can wrap right up onto the walls. When you think about a dining room, it doesn't need that much fabric. Perhaps you've got drapes and upholstered chairs, but that's really the extent of your opportunity to add fabric and pattern. So I always like to inject some life with wallpaper. I like the geometrics, Sarah, with the softness of our furniture. Oh, this is totally it. We've chosen elegant, delicate, restrained pieces, and yeah. now we give this big element to the room, which makes it feel more contemporary, more fun, more young. I am crazy about this wallpaper. I love it. And I am closing the book on this. <laughs> You've landed on the perfect wallpaper. Now take it with you when you search for fabric for the showcase dining chairs. This can go up. Do you see what I see? Yes, very pretty. How about a really subtle reference to the green? It's not exactly a match, but it's absolutely in the same family, which is totally acceptable to me. This has the really nice, vivid, hot colors that we're looking for to temper the blue. Two choices here. You could make a big statement by using this as drapes. Yeah. It would be no. an expensive statement. Yeah, it's Or say. you could make a smaller yet very impactful statement by using it just on the outside back of the dining chairs right. and then use something else on the insides of the chairs. Right. You would never sit on this or against this because it's 
too delicate. Delicate. Nine dollars. Yes. Three hundred and one dollars and seventy-one cents, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you find things in your travels that you don't know you're going to use until bingo. Look at this? those with this fabric. Hello. Okay, I found them. Vintage, perfect condition. Porcelain flowers, hundred and thirty dollars each. Let's not electrify them and use them as actual candle sconces. Absolutely. I'm Every happy. dining room needs a little romance, darling. So pretty. I have two. Oh, I assumed you had two. <laughs> You would never buy just one sconce. That's Great. not enough romance. <laughs> and after a bit more fabric sourcing, it's time to pull the scheme together. We've got our chairs and we've got our embroidered silk. Yes. So we know that the embroidered silk is going to go on the outside back, right. but we need to choose what's going on the inside back and the seat of the chairs. Well, we've assembled a bunch of different colors that all are extrapolated from the silk. Right off the bat, I'm not thinking it's the pink. I feel like that's going to be too bossy a statement. Which brings us to the yellow. Right. It is a bit of a departure, but I love the fact that we have only the tiniest hint of mustard yellow in the silk, and it might be fun to sort of celebrate the yellow on the inside backs and the seats of the chairs. The yellow will help pull out the golden detail in the wallpaper. Mm -hmm. A geometric cotton is the right kind of youthful feeling, I think. It's got some texture to it in the coloring. You get the elegance, but you get the casual all together. It's casual elegance. Yeah. So if it's not the pink for the chairs, do you think we can still work in a little accent? I mean, look at this one. Beautiful this cotton gorgeous. velvet. The room needs a break from pattern now. So we have our chair backs and the seats. This pink, which references the flowers in the silk, could be on a side stool for extra seating. Look at this. This is a twill. Mm -hmm. It's six ninety nine a yard. It's got a little bit of a sheen. It's going to look more like a, a cotton sateen mm -hmm. as opposed to dungarees. Okay. What if we could dress it up with a bit of an embellishment in terms of trim? Well, you're going to have to because that's going to die on its own. Well, right now it seems to me that everything wants your attention when you come in the room. The wallpaper wants your attention. The chairs definitely want your attention. A hit of pink wants your attention. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to be quiet in the room. Drapes are going to be quiet. To add elegance, charm, and whimsy to this bland dining room, we snapped up vintage chairs. Oh, shield back chairs. Picked equally dramatic paper for the walls and splurged on high impact silk for the chair backs. Next, flooring, paint, and all important accessories. We're showing you how to transform a blank canvas dining room into something warm and inviting with showstopper chairs, wallpaper, and fabric. Do you see what I see? This fabric is fabulous. I love it. Next, the investment pieces. Dining table, sideboard, high impact chandelier. Real fixture, 10 lights, $305. It's traditional in its origin, but yet it's been rendered in a way that's a little bit more streamlined. And what do you know? It works perfectly with the gold in the wallpaper and the sconces. So now, let's find a table. I think this table is absolutely stunning. Look at the wood and the banding. Flamed mahogany. I desperately want this table. $3,206.25. And worth it at twice the price. And it comes with a leaf. I feel that we have found such bargains in those chairs that we could maybe afford to splurge slightly on the table because it's all about balancing the budget, right? What you save on one, you splurge on another. If there's any table that will warm up our dining room, this is it. And an extra leaf will allow seating for eight. And for storage, this Sheridan-style sideboard matches the quality and wood tone of the table. What's not to like? They have beautiful tapered legs, nice clean lines, the bow front, gorgeous top that has beautiful banding on it. You get great storage for silverware mm -hmm. in the main drawer and a door here. You might think that $3,000 is a lot to spend for a table or a sideboard, but take a closer look and investigate the care and the workmanship and the quality that went into these pieces. Antiques will hold their value for years to come. You can always resell them. We're customizing the shield back chairs with dark stain and new fabric. Each chair costs about $400 in all, and now they're total originals. You can play around and experiment with an accent fabric on the back of just about any chair. The best results are on a chair that has a wood frame. It creates a nice break and a transition from the fabric on the back 
to the fabric on the inside. You've locked down your furniture, chosen a lyrical wallpaper, but you can do even more to dress up the plain walls. Let's talk about how to embellish and fancify. With trim. I got trim. To make this dining room more of a jewel box, we're only using wallpaper above a chair rail and trim detail. Don't forget to take furniture height into account. Most sideboards are 36 inches high, give or take, and you're gonna need a little bit of breathing room above that because when you have three decorative elements coming together, the furniture, the trim, and the wall, you wanna give everything its own amount of weight and presence. Sure. So six inches above the sideboard height gives us 42, which I think is ideal. Great. Another way to embellish a plain room is to look down to the floors. Add a touch of formality by sanding and staining them a darker shade. Then, rather than a new rug, how about a painted border to add even more character? Once the floor is stained and the first coat of urethane goes on, this is very important because you don't want the paint to penetrate into the wood. You have to have that first coat of urethane on. Next step, tape off a design. Make sure you burnish it down well. Then you can add a couple of coats and tomorrow they can come back and put the last coats of urethane on. If you're gonna do this kind of treatment on the floor, you want something that's gonna last for the long haul. So instead of choosing a color specific to the decorating scheme, I'm trying to choose something neutral that can stay forever. Since we're painting the floor, it seems like a good time to choose paint for the walls too. Hey, Tommy. Yeah? I just did some samples based on the colors that we have in the wallpaper and I tried to draw them out we need to think of a color for what we're treating as paneling right. below our chair rail. Mm -hmm. But maybe two-tone paneling. Like, I actually think both of these colors that you have here in the gray tones would work well on the paneling. We're using the darker shade on the inside, the lighter on the outside, and we're separating the two by painting the trim white. I think that white highlight will always help reinforce what we've done and make it seem a bit more crisp. Yeah. What do you think about the yellow? Is that crazy for the ceiling? I love the yellow, but you might want to go with a bit of a half tone because, as you know, like you get the light, you get the colors, you get all the other stuff in the room, and it feels really intense up there. So what you're really saying is you like all of the colors that I brought you so much that you want to use all of them. They look good, because you know what you're doing. I really like this. LUT accessories add extra sparkle to the dining experience. Secondhand silver has loads of character and can be snapped up for a song. Look at that. These flowers, I would say, are so, somewhat evocative of the flowers that are on the outside back of our dining chairs. Embroidered silk. Exactly. Nice. And Tommy found this floral dish set of eight place settings for $375. You'd pay at least twice for that new. In our jewel box dining room, we added paneling, refinished the floors, and partnered cotton and silk on the chairs for a double hit of pattern. Next, our artwork and a DIY. Wait, wait! You are trigger happy! Today's case study is a humdrum dining room, and we're showing you how to make it elegant and inviting. Find a dynamic wallpaper to give it some real punch. Mix in vintage furnishings. I desperately want this table. Embellish the floors and walls and doors, and you're well on your way to creating a dining room with dramatic appeal. I've found a set of six chairs, but I want to make sure that this dining room can easily accommodate eight. After all, you want to plan ahead for when a crowd is coming. Keep your arms in close and don't touch anything. <laughs> hey, how about these chairs to complement the other six shield backs that we've already got? We definitely have to paint them. They would have to be painted. Easy reupholster job. We could do that ourselves, actually. They're sturdy. They're great. Okay. Let's take them and get it. You take one, I'll take one. All right. Don't hit anything. Taking a cue from the ceiling, we had the chairs sprayed yellow. We've chosen this simple cotton stripe, which ties in with the background of the wallpaper and the drapes. Reupholstering seats like these is easy. First, remove all of the old fabric and padding. I went ahead and I cut our squares of fabric. Mm -hmm. And I ironed them. And cut your foam pad and polyester batting so it overlaps the wooden seat bottom by about half an inch. Make sure you mark the seat bottom for centering so that you can line up your fabric. Before I do anything dangerous like this, there. Not ready. 
when you go to staple it, yeah. one hand on the gun and one hand on the front. Pull the fabric tight and staple the front side first to make sure everything's centered. Quick draw Smythe. Then the back, oh. then the sides. Wait, wait! Watch your fingers. You are trigger happy. Easy. One, and a two, three. Cut the excess fabric at the corners, neatly fold, and staple them last. We want to put a little backing on. This will give the seat a nice finished look, and voila, you've just saved yourself about $60 per chair in reupholstering costs. Only thing left to do is put the screws back in, attach them, and sit down. I'm exhausted. Not ones to rest on our laurels, it's time to check in at Gita's. Wow. <laughs> you like it? I love it. This was bold. If you think about our wood furniture that's coming in here against this backdrop, look at it. When working with such a large design, have a chat with your installer to discuss the repetition of pattern you want to see. Make sure the paper fits symmetrically on the wall so the pattern is even on all sides. If you're trying to furnish a room with good quality pieces that you'll love for the long haul, something's got to give. In this case, it was the artwork. There just wasn't any budget left at the end. So I found a painting for only $85. You don't always have to spend a lot to get high impact. And when it comes to high impact, I think I found the ideal solution for above the sideboard. Basically, you've got two choices. You've got a mirror or artwork. By hanging a mirror horizontally centered above the sideboard, it will both create a beautiful reflection and it will create impact in the room. Once you've decided that it's a mirror, you need to narrow down the choice. I happen to have found the perfect candidate. It has a pattern around the corners that mimics the same pattern on the dining room floor. If you can find a linking motif and keep repeating it, the room will be that much more beautiful. And speaking of beauty, you're obsessing about this table. I am obsessed with this table because you never have the table set on a daily basis. So every time these people look into this room, they're gonna see something that looks like a magnificent piece of art. I love it for the natural beauty and the natural properties. I mean, yeah. I am all about the grain. No dinner party would be complete without flowers but they don't have to be expensive to have impact. You know what I like to do? Just go for individual balloons, cut them short, and put one per vase. Keep it simple. These are each only $3. So if I do six of them running down the length of the table, $18. It's gonna look magnificent. To turn this bland dining room into a dramatic jewel box, we've used gorgeous furniture, dramatic wallpaper, trim detailing, flooring, lighting, and artwork. Ready to see how we turned a boring box into a room with impact? Stay tuned. To take your dining room from bland to beautiful, think about these simple embellishments. Elegant wallpaper, colorful fabric, trim on the walls. Let's talk about how to embellish and fancify. And a painted floor detail. Remember what this dining room looked like when we started? You won't believe what it looks like now. I think of a dining room as a place for celebration, so I don't mind if it looks a little bit more fancy. This is a place to pull out the good china, set the table with some pretty sparkly objects, put out some flowers, and make sure that everybody has a great time. Dining tables come in all shapes and sizes, but I think the hands down winner is a rectangle. It is the most versatile. You can seat two and not feel like you're sitting miles apart, yet you can cram in a crowd when you need to. There are a number of motifs that we repeated throughout the room. It all started with the crown molding. It has a stepped profile, which we then repeated on the chair rail and on the panel detail. There's the motif that we painted on the floor, which is picked up again on the mirror and even slightly referenced in the Greek key detail that's on the ribbon on the draperies. Lastly, there's a scroll motif in the wallpaper that references both sets of chairs. 
One of the most successful things about this room is that we added the panel detail down below on the walls, and then we added something that was a very strong statement in terms of wallpaper, but it's only on 50% of the wall surface. Down below, you've got a nice, solid, basic, simple anchor. Very, very important from a design perspective. I chose to use a watered down shade of the color we've got on the chairs to give it one more reference and reflection point from chairs to ceiling. I'm often drawn to pretty, sparkly, fancy chandeliers, but in a room where every surface is covered with pattern and interest, I thought that we needed to take a break with the lighting. It needed to have some restraint to balance out all of the opulence. I firmly believe that when you give people a really pretty dining room, even if they've never entertained before in their lives, they're gonna get good at doing it because you want to be there. Really looking forward to using it now, both for just intimate dinners with Jerry, but as well as just sharing that whole room and the experience with our family and friends and can't wait to, to start using it. Everywhere you look in the room tells a story and when you look at the whole thing, it all comes together. It just feels like a special place in the house. Dining rooms are about potential. The more exciting the decor is, the more exciting the environment is. So why be shy? Be bold. Even the plainest room can be turned into a jewel box with the right mix of fabric, furniture, and pattern. I'm gonna hold a new staple. This is, oh wait, hold on. I'm gonna turn it to you. But I've got a packer. Don't, here. don't worry about that yet. Do you wanna pull this? No, we don't want that lumping all the way over. You just want it to come to the edge. Wait, wait, just hold on. I'm gonna hurry. I'm just doing an extra one here. These are not flush.